Hello everyone, and welcome to coverage of Grand Prix Winnipeg for the MSCM format. I'm Caillou, and today we're going to be watching the round one match between Splash Cat, who is on a white-blue Concord, a deck which uses the titular mechanic Concord, which cares about having a bunch of permanent types among permanents you control, um, to run out a tempo-y game plan that also has uh, the powerful backup plan of Windmill Slamming an Artificer's Gift into a game-winning Head of Ulco. So sort of a, a tempo-ish deck that also has a, a combo backup. Um, meanwhile, on the other end of the table, we have Ambrose Winters, who's playing Mono Blue Control, uh, is going to run out a Plasma Arc uh, to bounce this uh, Merfolk token created by Idyllic Odyssey. And since it's a token, that's effectively just straight removal. And without a, and without a creature to target these, Idyllic Odyssey is looking a lot sadder here. Let's see what... Um, Splash Cat's going to bring to bear main phase 2, though. That does look like Head of Alco mana, potentially. 3 white? Or not Head of Alco, sorry. Artificer's Gift mana. And there it is. That is its Artificer's Gift. Sacks all their artifacts and now tutors up a Head of Alco. So Head of Alco is basically just repeatable Vindicate every end step. You'll be seeing it in just a second here. It's quite a powerful uh, uh, win con to tutor up with Artificer's Gift. And you have a bunch of... Uh, like loose artifacts to turn on Concord anyways. So see a pet of Alco gonna come in and then probably just start to steal uh lands. And with this it becomes really hard for Ambrose to win because most of Ambrose's win cons are, are pretty much all of them are lands themselves, with the idea being hey, they're hard to interact with and they don't take up deck slots, so I can just run all the interaction. The issue being um you know, head of Alco kind of just does not care about that. It will just chomp, chomp, chomp everything you got. And since Ambrose is in mono blue, I don't think Ambrose has a meaningful way to fight through this. I'll check, but I don't think Ambrose has any removal that actually kills Head of Alco. I think even Ambrose is one bounce spell. Plasma Arc is only creatures, right? Yeah, it's only creatures. So this is very much an uphill battle. Yeah, Ambrose has literally no answers to this. And Splash Cat can take their sweet time uh, slow rolling here and just steal all of Ambrose's lands. I think it's kind of surprising that Ambrose hasn't conceded yet, if I'm being completely honest with you. <laughs> but Ambrose is just valiantly playing land after land. And that's the third Sunrise River to be eaten by Head of Alco. Hey, maybe we'll get a, f a full playset by the end of this game. And oh no, it looks like Ambrose's lands have, uh, the drought has uh, come up. On the other end, uh, Splash Cat now has the six mana required to be uh, to required to untap Warded Tome and start using it as a draw engine. So, is likely holding up interaction just in case, but otherwise at the start of every end step can just uh, double draw. And yep, here we go. He's just digging for some sort of creature. And here's one of Ambrose's win cons, Monument of Queens. Of course, if you cut Ambrose off blue mana, I don't think it particularly matters, especially since Monument of Queens costs 4 to activate anyways. I don't know why Ambrose is playing this out. Maybe just to to put mental fatigue on Splash Cat as well. Maybe just out of, like, sheer stubbornness of, like, hey, you see, like, hey guys, you see how miserable this is to play against? Yeah. And fine, no, oh, nope, finally, I don't know what finally convinced Ambrose to concede there instead of everywhere every other turn that he was getting vindicated but finally does concede and let's see what he can bring in out of the sideboard to potentially mitigate uh, this matchup okay so on Ambrose's end uh I guess find nothing technically functions as a counterspell for artificer's gift but the problem is if you overfocus on the combo the fair game plan will run you down decree of bias yeah, I think there's there's too many varied types for Decree of Bias to be worth it here. Um, Resonating Force seems quite good because you can actually answer ahead of Alco, you can answer um, a Merfolk token, you can bounce... Yeah, I think Resonating Force as opposed to Plasma Arc seems like a pretty cheap uh, swap. Um, Forbidden Treasure as like an uh, all of your Artificial's gifts are gone now seems pretty good as well. But yeah, it's, Ambrose just does not have a lot in terms of options. I don't know why they limited themselves to mono blue in such a rigidly mono blue list at that, but it's definitely going to sh show its weaknesses here. Meanwhile, on Splash Cat's end, hmm, Event Horizon probably not very good. 
Tiny Hero and Toddy, not so much. Rust Shell, not great. Sigil of Radiance, co Cosmic Sinkhole is anti-interaction probably. Stolen Secrets, I could see as like... Yeah, I think Stolen Secrets is the best one here, is just like... Ambrose's deck is 90% instants, so you can be guaranteed to grab something there. So I think you bring in the full playset of Stolen Secrets and just call it a day. Hand Attack is good against Control, and this piece of Hand Attack specifically is amazing against Ambrose. Okay, and getting into game two, um, Ambrose is going to open up with Sunset Monastery. Did bring in the Forbidden Treasures as interaction, and has Find Nothings, plus Cane Dancer to flash them back. So, pretty good on the combo end of things. The problem is... Um, if Splash Cat tries to make a go of it for the fair game plan, not going to be as great. Splash Cat keeping kind of a weird hand, honestly. You can, I guess, you can run out a fair last passage in order to, um, in order to like just filter through, and turn one corrupted memory, or turn one wheat from chaff. Both good plays. Okay, he's going to run out the corrupt, the corrupted memory. The problem is whatever you take is still playable because Cane Dancer still flashes it back. Splash Cat is going to take the Forbidden Treasure. Doesn't want uh, multiple counters to be possible. Probably because wants to play Last Passage and or Weed from Chaff and have them resolve. I think Splash Cat only has one copy of Head of Alco in their deck. So keeping this hand seems a very sus to me because they can, can no longer tutor it up with Artificer's Gift. Maybe I'm wrong. The turn to Union Riddle Strike Breaker is quite good. Um... Because they know that unless Ambrose top decks something else, they can, this is uncounterable. And then now they just keep generating value slash win conning from here on out. So now it's going to be a lot harder for Ambrose to actually control this game. Because Union Rail come, comes down and unless Splash Cat foolishly attacks in when they know that Ambrose has Cane Dancer, it puts a quick clock onto the battlefield. Um, Idravir is fine as a blocker, but not great. Monument of Queens is the real gas, but it takes a while to pump up. And again, if Ambrose ever taps out, it's scary because Splash Cat could have opportunities to just kind of go ham. Okay, so Splash Cat with Terraformer's Globe, Wheat from Chaff. Pre okay, it's so just going to play the Terraformer's Globe to start off with. Gets a Construct. Again, we know this isn't counterable because uh, Forbidden Treasure only counters instant of sorceries, and Ambrose is just pretending to have a counterspell by going, hmm, doesn't actually have anything substantial. And then running out the last passage, interesting. Abandoned Monument will not untap next turn. And this one, Ambrose actually can counter and is going to find nothing in response. I don't think this does anything. Yeah, I'm not sure I understand this play. Uh, yeah, that, that, that just that was just cantripping. Yeah, I, I, I don't get that at all. I don't know why Ambrose didn't just cane dancer there, if anything. And wow, that's actually that's the full playset of find nothing in the top twelve cards. That's actually kind of insane. But yeah, now we're seeing a limitation of mono blue is that mono blue does not give you access to wipes. It doesn't give you access to much permanent interaction uh, in, uh, removal at all, really. So Ambrose's main hope is just, well, I'll play Monument and then get bigger than them. But other than that, it doesn't really have a sustainable win con here. Okay, Stolen Secret's going to run out. Okay, so going to try and run out the Stolen Secrets. This time, Ambrose is going to choose to run out the Cane Dancer into Forbidden Treasure, exiling all of the uh, Stolen Secrets that Splash Cat brought in. So the playset gets exiled. We see what's in Splash Cat's deck. What else did they bring in? Looks like just the Stolen Secrets as expected. Main deck is pretty well teched for this matchup. Oh, and the Cosmic Sinkholds, interestingly enough. And then now that Ambrose is tapped out, going to run out the Artificer's Gift. And then at this point, you just find nothing. Also, I just realized that Artificer's Gift, can it puts it onto your hand after tutoring it. Oh, that's insane. So it doesn't shop, stop the show-and-tell mode. So Splash Cat can just put Head of Alco onto the battlefield now. Oh, yeah, I think that's just game. Like, emphatically just game. Oh my god. Okay, I thought that Find Nothing's actually stopped this, but no. Okay, Head of Alco taking the Cane Dancer. And the Plasma Arc stayed in over the Resonating Force? Oh no. Yeah, that's no bueno. And I d again, I don't think Ambrose has a single out to this unless they brought in the Resonating Forces. 
Oh man, an idyllic odyssey means that Splash Cat actually also has an, an insanely reasonable clock now. Okay, bouncing the Union Rail Strike Breaker in response. The problem, hmm, I think that this was also kind of a bad move. The reason being, well, it's not ideal, but you, I think you want to save up and then bounce the token that gets Idyllic Odyssey a few, a few times. Okay, but I guess did it to draw into the still the Pandemonium, which is a great top deck off the draw from Plasma Arc. So Idyllic Odyssey will get countered, but now can still just replay Union Rail and then play the Weed from Chaff. You can poke in for three on end. Head of Alco going to yoink the Monument of Queens. Yep. Okay, so at this point, I think you just cracked the clue and hope to hit a bounce spell for Head of Alco, really. Let's see if Ambrose is cracking the clue. Gets a Cane Dancer. I will say this. Ambrose is fighting till the bitter end. Though I do think it's going to be bitter, bitter, bitter. Okay, so Ambrose is going to Cane Dancer. Using Plasma Arc, bounce under the Constructs. And then Union Rail uh, gonna get eaten by the Cane Dancer thing. I think attacking with yeah, I think attacking with the Union Rail is kind of bad there. Yeah, Splash Cat even saying that was dumb. Once again, I don't think it's gonna matter particularly because Head of Alco do be schnasty. Okay, draws in a Northern Express line another art. I think yeah, you just you discard Mana Confluence in a Northern Express line. And then you keep the Artificer's Gift in case they brought in Resonating Force, basically. I don't think Splash Chat has any, like, secondary targets other than Head of Alco. So yeah, probably on end here, just Yoink the Cane Dancer. Again, one thing that makes this really easy is that, um... Is that Ambrose doesn't have a lot of win cons, so you can really slow roll them. Because Alratha, it's not a win con because it doesn't actually kill them. And I think Monument of Queens... Cane Dancer, Idravir, and like Tomb of Drakes are the only real win cons here. Okay, Splash Cat going to run out a uh, top decked Prying Inquiry. Ambrose is immediately going to steal the Pandemonium. This it's a very juicy target, anyways. But again, without uh, an additional Cane Dancer, these took these cons are just going to keep hitting in. And now, yeah, Head of Alco going to grab the Aldratha, going to investigate before it goes. Or actually, no, it's going to yeah, it's going to spend. It looks like actually he's going to spend the mana from it to crack the clue from still the pandemonium. Never mind. And then, yeah, it just gets it attached to head of Alco. Finally runs out the Idravir. I don't think it's going to matter, though. If you're Splash Cat, you just don't attack this turn. And then you head of Alco it on end. Really. No, okay, it looks like actually Splash Cat is just going to swing in anyways. Hemorrhage is a construct. And on end, head of Alco grabs Idravir. I think Splash Cat realizes that this game is over, even if Ambrose doesn't, and just wants to wrap it up as quickly as possible, because that kind of reckless hemorrhaging of the Construct really didn't need to happen. Splash Cat's deck keeps giving them Artificial's Gift, like, would you like to combo? Would you like to combo? I know you already have a head of Alco, but would you like to combo? Running out the weed from Chaff. I honestly think that at this point, just don't give Ambrose spells to counter. Yeah, okay, he's gonna steal the Pandemonium again. So it's a turn later, and Ambrose is doing the same thing. Is going to counter a weed from Chaff to get the clue. And finally, after drawing out the game for entirely longer than was needed, Ambrose concedes, and Splash Cat wins 2-0. And yeah, I think that that was both the com that was a beating. It was both a combination of Splash Cat's deck um, having cheap interaction to go on to go under Ambrose and having multiple devastating linear plans, but also Ambrose's deck is frankly not very good or representative of a representative of what a control deck can be in a format as high powered as MSEM. Not just because it's limited to mono blue, but also because I think it has some subpar card choices here and there. Um, in terms of both efficiency and also its over reliance on counter magic to actually deal with anything. But yeah. Um, until next time, this is Caillou signing off.